Today we are starting uh, material properties, right? Uh, we study materials, different things, but from here we will be just briefly summarizing the material properties. Then in detail we will study later on, right? Now the first thing is uh, what is material property? Now material property it is the characteristic of the material, a trait of the material, right? But there is one thing which is which must be very clear about the material property, which is that the, this property of the material which is known as the material property is independent of the material shape and size. I will give you an example. If we have, let's say a material, uh, this marker I have, let's say, and if it is made up of steel, if I want to test this, uh, the, uh, let's say the density, I want to find the density of the this marker, it should give me the same value. Uh, even if I cut the marker into three, four pieces and I measure the density of a small piece. Right? Because the material is same, so the material properties should be the same, right? It should not depend on the size or the shape of the material. If we have a steel, we, we want to find the ultimate tensile strength, let's say, or the, the, the young modulus of the material, of the steel. So the young modulus of the steel should be the same, even if we have one centimeter of steel or we have one meter of the steel, right? It is independent of the shape and size. This is the important thing in the material property, right? If some property which is dependent on the shape and size, like I will give you example, the area of the any material, any object. If I have, let's say, a, a small sheet of steel, and if it is like, let's suppose the size is small, so the area will be different. If, the, if I have a bigger size, the area will be different, right? So area is not a material property, it is geometrical property. So this thing you have to keep it in mind, the, the material properties are independent of the material shape and size. Now for the solid material, which I discussed in the last class, that we, what we are dealing here is uh, in this course, we are discussing solid material. So for the solid material, the, all the properties have been grouped or divided into different categories. What are those different categories? We have mechanical properties, right? We have electrical properties, we have thermal properties, magnetic properties, optical properties, and deteriorative properties, right? Six different categories are here for the uh, properties. You see here, we have mechanical, electrical, all what I said are listed here. Now all these properties, we have a single, single chapter over it, right? We will discuss all these in detail, but just uh, briefly, I will explain all these here to you. Like mechanical properties, they relate deformation to an applied force or load. So whenever we are applying a load some uh, our force on the material, what happens to the material? So these properties tell us these things, right? Like uh, the mechanical property of the elastic modulus, right? The strength of the material, the hardness of the material, right? How the, is the material brittle? The material is tough. All these, these things, uh, these properties are come under the umbrella of mechanical properties. For electrical properties, such as electrical conductivity, electrical resistivity, dielectric uh, constant, or if I want to put a material within the electric field, so how it behaves? Is it stimulus to the electric field or not? So all these uh, properties are electrical properties, right? Now, what happens to the electrical properties and are the mechanical properties? If we are processing the material, these things we will discuss when we are studying uh, these properties in detail, right? So we will have a detailed discussion. If we process the material, what happens to this properties and what happened to this property? Metal, what about the electrical conductivity of metal? The metals, the electrical conductivity of uh, non-metal, ceramics and all these, we will discuss there. Then we have the thermal properties. The thermal properties are the thermal behavior of solid material uh, can be represented in the terms of heat capacity, uh, thermal conductivity. So as we, uh, we, like we have the electrical conductivity, we also have the thermal conductivity. How much heat is transferred from the material? And this is very important, right? Uh, usually in the heat exchanger, our air conditioning and all these, this heat transfer is very, very uh, important. Then we have the magnetic properties and the magnetic properties uh, demonstrate how the material behave to the magnetic field. If we put a material in the magnetic field, how it will behave, right? So all these are the magnetic, the optical properties, right? When the light is coming or is uh, reflected, if we see the light is reflecting completely from the object or it is passing from the object. So all these things uh, come under the optical properties, right? The refraction, the reflectivity, all these, the, 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 what happens to the light radiation when we put the material, right? So these comes under the uh, optical properties. Then finally, we have the deteriorative uh, characteristic, which says uh, whether the material is reactive with some chemical or not, inert. Is it inert or more reactive, right? So if you put some chemical in the, 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 the in that material, if you made a container of some material, so what will happen, whether, whether it will react or not, right? So all those, all these things uh, come under the deteriorative characteristics of the material. So all these six are uh, different properties, or you can say the material properties have been grouped into six categories, right? 
we will discuss in detail in one one chapter like mechanical electrical all we have a detailed discussion now in the previous class we discussed something this uh, processing structure properties and performance right now the structure and properties we discuss a little bit but in addition to that the processing and performance right this is very important now what happens if we process the material so it will affect the performance of the material right and even if we don't process some natural processing occur i gave you example in the last class of the titanic what was there the temperature uh, was very low this this is you can say this is a natural processing and you saw the performance of the uh, titanic ship so this processing is related to the performance and although in between there is the structure is changing and when the structure change the properties change it but you can say even directly if the, the you process a material it will affect the performance but all these if you say these four terms are, uh, are in this order right what happens actually when we process the structure of the material change and then after that the properties changes and of course if the properties of the material property here i mean the material property and like the strength if you process a material the strength might change and if the strength change then of course the performance will not be the same as as what it was before right now here you can see there is a very good example of the optical properties of the material we have a single material right we have this disc you see here the disc it is made up of aluminum oxide right this one is also aluminum oxide this one is also aluminum oxide but now if you see here the structure is changed and based on the structure change we see different optical properties what are those optical properties if you see to the the, the first image it is completely transparent so you see it is put, we have placed it on the paper and whatever is below the paper we can see it clearly it is transparent why it is transparent because it is a single crystal the the the, the structure of the material is single crystal right in single crystal what happens actually if we have the material like you see here so all the atoms are arranged in a specific pattern right and the pattern is same the pattern is same you see because we have the the, the single grain you know? so the pattern is same so all the light is passing from it there is no refraction nothing happen while on the other side if you see the polycrystalline material which is here this is the structure is polycrystalline now in the polycrystalline what happened in the polycrystalline we have let's say we have the the grain different grain let's say we have these three so here the atoms will be arranged let's say in this order right like in this order but here it might be arranged in this order so this structure behaves optically translucent while at the end if you see this material it has some porosity even polycrystalline and it has some porosity and this porosity scatter the light light coming from the page you see so it will be scattered here here and here and we cannot see so now this the structure we have the same material aluminum oxide but different structure and based on different structure we see different properties right even the material is same the size is same the shape is same you see but give it gives us uh, different properties so all these what i have told you what happens actually i have summarized uh, here you can read it for for yourself but it is the same thing what i just said you that what is what actually happened on this image and what happened in this image and what happened here in this right so this is a very good example of the processing structure properties and performance right mainly you can say the structure and the properties right so the structure is changed the properties are changed there is another example here you can see here what we are doing we are processing the material we have a material and we are processing now what is the processing here on the x axis you see there is a cooling rate we are cooling the material right so the cooling rate here it is 0.01 degree per second and here we have uh, 1000 degree per second now what happens actually to the material as we are processing it we are increasing the cooling rate the microstructures of the material changes this is the same material but you see the microstructure in a it is different from b while the b is different from c and c is different from d while all these are the same material but what we are doing we are processing it and we are cooling it now on the y axis we have mechanical property hardness daniel hardness number you see here this we will discuss when we are uh, studying the mechanical properties but it is one of the mechanical properties and you see here for this microstructure the hardness number is in the range below 400 then here it is above 400 here this is even up to 500 and if you see here it is above 600 the hardness number so by this what I, what do i mean if we process the material 
you have to keep this in mind the structure of the material will change and when the structure of the material changes the properties of the material will change and of course when the properties of the material change so whatever design you have made because you design based on the properties how you design like let's suppose you are designing a beam so you design let the strength of the beam is let's say 200 megapascal somehow right or 300 megapascal but once you design the whole thing and after some few days the strength comes to let's say 100 megapascal so your design is failed in that case right so you have to keep it in mind that with the processing the properties are changing and the performance of the material will affect but you have to keep it in mind the processing doesn't only mean you process it maybe some natural processing can happen right so are you with me okay good good wherever you have confusion just ask me now here is uh, one slide why we study this material science why we uh, are behind this thing you know as a mechanical engineer why we study it or you can say in general as an engineering why we study the material science can you guys tell me why we study just one one sentence somehow i explained in the first class but here i wrote in the slides few things why we study this course yes all of you are right we study this material science because you are you will be become a uh, mechanical engineer and almost all engineers they are dealing somehow with the uh, material right in their life or in their job whatever they are doing they are dealing even if they are mechanical engineer they are civil engineer chemical engineer electrical engineer any types of engineer they are dealing somehow with the material like for example the mechanical engineer the gear transmission system right so the in the vehicle the gear tra transmission system it is made up of like let's say you can say from steel it works right but what do you think if it was made up of plastic it would have not work if it was made of normal plastic but nowadays even with the new uh, polymers are coming the new composite material are coming people are thinking to make uh, the gear box from the the those types of material the composite material right which will have less weight so this is just an example if you can change the material it will be good or even if you can see the civil engineer the superstructure they are building the the, the high riser the, the the bridges they are building they use material right an oil refinery component like a petroleum engineer or you can say a mechanical engineer in the oil refinery what components we will be using all these as a electrical engineer or electronics engineer you can say the electrical wiring the ic's different types of electronic devices which material we have to use even in the semiconductor there are like silicon is a semiconductor germanium is a semiconductor and which one we have to use because you might have studied this let's suppose if you want to make a single diode so voltage drop across the silicon is uh, either 0.3 or the germanium is 0.7 there is a different but now even the with the recent uh, research and uh, advancement in the technology the new diode the short key diodes have came which have even less voltage drop so this is only possible because of the new material right so many times a material problem is one of the the selecting the right material from the thousands of the available material so whenever you are working on some project so the big problem to you will be how to choose a material from the available material you have to choose the right material if you cannot choose the right material you cannot design anything you cannot manufacture anything right like tomorrow if let's suppose you went to workshop and you take some glass piece and you want to machine it on the turning machine so what will happen you cannot machine like the conventional machining right you so you must know the properties of the material and which material have to be used in the specific pro uh, problem or project you can say so the classic example then wall the strength and ductility normally we need that material should be of high strength and it must be ductile a little bit right but usually we see the material uh, the, like the ductile material usually the strength is less but you have to optimize these properties right the second selection consideration in any de uh, deterioration material a material property that may occur during service operation like for example significant reduction in mechanical strength may result from the exposure to elevated temperature and corrosive corrosive environment now if you have let's suppose the material you you put it outside in the open air right and you don't know that it will react with the let's say the the the, the water vapor or with the oxygen or with the nitrogen which is freely outside right so what will happen that material will react and something will happen to the material maybe it, it will be something else when you go and check so you must know the, the 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 famous thing is the rusting right the iron rust if you keep it outside open so after some few days there will be too much rust right because it react with the oxygen 
and then there will be rusting. And after rusting, some corrosion might happen. So the chemical reactivity of the material, you must know, right? Whatever material you are using. So in the surrounding of that material, what types of chemicals will be there? What types of other materials will be there with which it will react? So this is also important and we must know it. Finally, the important thing is whenever you are making a product, let's say you are making this uh, marker, you must know what will be the final cost of the material. When you finish the product, it comes to the market, what will be its price? Like you can make this marker from gold, you can make it even from the steel, from aluminium, right? From any material you can make. But the thing is, you must know what will be its, its cost, who will buy it, right? So it should be, the cost should be uh, of the level that a normal person should have buy it. If you are making it for the common people, right? The marker is not like some luxurious item. So then the, the, the common people buy it. So it, the cost must not be too much. So cost is another factor. The more the familiar an engineer or scientist is with the various characteristics, like if we have an engineer and if he knows more knowledge, if he has more knowledge about the various characteristics of the material, right? And he knows the structure property relationship and he knows the processing techniques of the material. So what will happen? He will be confident in making decision, right? He will be confident in his industry to choose a material for any purpose, right? Tomorrow, if you are going to an industry and you have the, all these knowledge, so you will be confident to take decision if you are making anything, you are making crane, you are making any part, right? So you will be confident to yeah, just, you will tell your technician, go and take that material and come, let us manufacture this thing. But if you don't know all these things, then you will not be confident, right? So that's why we study the material science and engineering course, right? To have knowledge for all these purposes, what we discussed here, right? Now, what materials we have? As an engineer, what materials are available to you? So mainly the solid material, right? Which we are tracking. These solid material have been divided into three basic categories, right? And those three basic categories are metals, ceramics, and polymer. Right? One by one, we will discuss all these. There is another one, which is known as composite, but composite is a material which is made of, of two or more than two these material. These material means composite can be of metal and polymer, composite can be of metal and ceramics, and composite can be of ceramics and polymer, or composite can be all of the three. So usually, like basically we have three categories and the fourth one, this is like we have to make. So the scheme is based primarily on the chemical makeup and atomic structure. We will study this atomic structure in the coming week, like the why the metal is different from the ceramics and why the ceramic is different from the polymer. It is based on their atomic structure, right? In addition, there are composite which engineer, which are engineered and the combination of two or more than two uh, different material. So this is the four types, but we will study it. Now another category of material, which is known as advanced material. Now, advanced material are those materials which are used in the high technology application. Now, high technology application means all these, what we are using, let's say the, the, the computer, the smartphone we are using, right? They, these are the high tech application, the, the, the new car, the latest car you have. So what materials are used here? Semiconductor, biomaterial, smart material and nano engineered material are used. Now here you have to keep this in your mind, this mobile phone, we call it high tech application, but it doesn't mean like the body of the mobile, even the, I have this plastic cover. So this plastic cover, this is not advanced material. This is just a polymer, right? Or the body of the mobile phone, let's say sometime it is made up of aluminum or some uh, normal composite. It is not advanced material. Advanced material, I mean, which we are used in the high tech means with which material the, the, the functionality of the mobile phone is based on, which is in this case, it is semiconductor, right? So all the, the, the electrical circuitry, the electronic circuitry inside the mobile phone is based on what? On the semiconductor material, right? And you can say mainly it is like the whole, the computer system is based on the transistor, which is made up of semiconductor material. So now semiconductor material is advanced material, right? Not the case, like even the computer case, the board, the smart board, it is high tech, but if you see the casing, it is normal plastic, right? So you have to keep this in mind. What do I mean by advanced material? Now all these materials, I will uh, explain to you one by one. Here we have metal, the first one, right? Guys, whenever you have something to share, you can just share, you can stop me, you can ask me, right? 
but you have to listen carefully what I am saying. Now the materials in this group, in the metals, they are composed of one or more metallic elements like example is you can say iron, aluminium, like pure iron, pure aluminium, copper, titanium, gold, nickel, right? Different types of material we have. Sometimes some non-metallic elements are also there with these uh, uh, elements. There might be carbon, nitrogen and oxygen, right? But they are in very small amount. Now, what happens actually, the atomic structure, the atoms in the metals and their alloys, like steel is an alloy, right? So, metallic alloy, the atoms are arranged in a properly manner, right? There is some order of the arrangement of metal. The, the next thing is the metals material, they have high density, they are stiff and strong. So, by stiff and strong, doesn't mean they, they are uh, brittle, they are ductile. You see here, they are ductile. Even they are stiff and strong, but they are ductile too. And they are resistant to fracture. It will not fracture like the ceramics. Ceramics means what you have usually the, the, the common, the, the cup you have in your houses, some other plates and all these things. If it fills on the floor, it will fracture directly, you can see it. But on the other side, if you have a metal plate, right, or steel plate, silver plate, if it fills on the floor, nothing will happen to it. Only you will hear a loud sound, right? So they are resistant to fracture. Now, metallic materials have large number of non-localized electrons. This non-localized electron, this is the important characteristics of the metallic material, which makes the metals too different from other uh, material. Like this non-localized electron gave a specific property, which is very good conductor of electricity. So, metals are good conductor of electricity. Why? Because of these non-localized electron. They are good conductor of heat even. So, heat can be transferred very easily. If you have a metal steel rod, and if you put it in the fire, so soon you will see the other end of the, the, the steel rod will be hot. Why? Because the heat is transferring. The heat transfer rate is too much. While on the other side, if you have a ceramic rod, you put it in the metal, nothing will happen. Even you can experiment this, like you have the tiles, the, the floor tiles. If you heat one side of the tile to the other side, it will not come. While if you have a metal sheet and if you put it in the fire, you cannot hold from the other end. Also, the polished metals, if we polish the metal, it will give a lustrous appearance. So this is the, the unique characteristic of the metal, right? So we see here different uh, materials made up of atoms, this knife, fork, scissors, like the gears, the wedding ring, the most important. So all these, the nuts and bolts, right? All these things are made up of metal. So you, you can see in your life a lot of things made up of the, the metals, right? On the other side, we have second category of the material, which is ceramics, right? So, ceramic is, of course, it is different from the, you can say, from the metals, even from the polymer, but it has some unique characteristics. And all these materials, it doesn't mean that this metals are good and ceramics are bad and polymer, all of, all of them have some specific application, right? And we use it for different purposes. Like there are uh, things which are only possible because of the ceramic characteristics of the material. If everything was made up of metal, then maybe the life would have not uh, been like this, like what we have. So, ceramics are compound between metallic and non-metallic uh, elements. They mostly, these ceramics are, they are oxides, they are nitride and carbide. So, oxide of what? Aluminium oxide, silicon oxides, right? Silica or silicon carbide, you can say, silicon nitride, all these are the examples of what, the other, these are the examples of ceramics material. Now, traditional ceramics, like the old ceramics, they composed of the clay mineral, right? The porcelain, as well as the cement and glass, they are the, the traditional ceramics. So, ceramics material, the properties of the ceramic material, they are stiff and strong, but on the other side, if you see, the ceramic materials have a brittleness characteristic. They are brittle. You can see the example of the tiles, the floor tiles. If you just take the tiles and let's say you, you hit it with a hammer, even with a less force, it will break very easily, right? So they are typically very hard. Now here, the hardness and brittleness, don't compare these two things, we will discuss it in detail. A material can be hard, but if you hit it with the hammer, it will break very easily. It doesn't mean that it will not break, right? Hardness doesn't mean that. We will discuss this in the detail, but don't think like if a material is hard, it is very strong. Historically, ceramics have exhibited extreme brittleness, as I told you, right? Lack of ductility. So, 
the ceramics material is not ductile. You cannot mold it, right, to some other shape. So if you want to try, let's suppose, to bend this ceramics, it will break very easily because it is brittle, right? However, newer, newer ceramics are being engineered to have improved resistance to friction. Now, researchers are working, and we hope you guys will also work to have a ceramic material which is a little like resistant to friction. Now, if you see the tiles, the old tiles were very brittle. Now, recently you might have seen this, these Chinese tiles are coming, you know. They are the ceramic material, but they are not that much brittle. It, they are a little bit resistant to the fracture. It will not fracture very easily. So this is possible. Why? Because of the, 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 the you can say, the, the material research, right? And from those new materials, the, the, the cookware, the cutlery, the, the kitchen apparatus, all these things that we use in the kitchen, and even some automobile engine parts are made up of those materials. So the, the other thing which is very important in the ceramics, they are very good insulator. They are not conductor, right? So heat and electricity cannot pass from it, right? Heat and electricity cannot pass. That's why we use it in the different uh, application where we want to insulate the things, right? So we can use it. More resistant to high temperature and harsh environment. Now you might have seen the furnace, right? Somewhere. Usually the furnace furnaces are made up of these ceramics material because they are resistant to high temperature. You cannot make a furnace of steel because on the other side, on the outside, let's say you have a furnace of some shape like this and you here is the fire, let's say, or the heat somehow. If this is made up of steel, so the, the heat will go here, right? Here and here. You will not have too much heat inside. But if it is made up of ceramic, the heat will not go out. Right? And whatever you are giving the energy, the total heat will be inside the, the, the furnace. So you can use it in a better way. So that's why they are more resistant to high temperature, right? And harsh environment. Harsh environment means when the temperature is very high or even very low. So with regard to the optical characteristic, ceramics may be, we can find ceramics in different, uh, or different characteristics of ceramics we can find regarding the, to the optical property. Like it can be transparent, translucent, and opaque. You, you might have seen these types of the, the glasses, right? These are ceramics, you see? And it might be transparent. Here it is completely opaque. So some of the oxide ceramics exhibit magnetic behavior as well. So like the iron oxide, they, they have some magnetic behavior. They are attracted by the magnet and they are stimulus to the magnet. So they have these uh, characteristics also. Now all these things, you have to understand what is the difference between ceramics and metal, which properties are famous for the ceramics. You can have a question in the exam. Or which, like, which ceramic exhibit magnetic behavior? So you must know that it is iron oxide. Or you must know, let's say we, I give you a question, that can we have a ceramic which is opaque, which is translucent, right? So if you studied the slide and if you are listening to me carefully, then you will be able to answer easily. But if you are not listening to me, then you have to search somewhere when you will search. Now the third category is the polymer. So polymer are usually they are the, the, the plastic material, right? Rubber material, you might have seen. And they are different in the properties from ceramics and even from the uh, metal. So many of them are organic compound and they are chemically based on carbon hydrogen. Usually they have like a long chain. You might have seen this types of reaction. Let's say we have carbon here, hydrogen here, right? They are chain. And then we have another carbon, right? Another hydrogen here, another hydrogen here, carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, right? So this is the polymer chain. Or you might have seen like we have carbon, double bond with carbon and single here hydrogen and here we have hydrogen and then we have another one here also, double bond and one one hydrogen we have, right? So these types of chains you might have seen, they are the, 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 the polymer material, right? They have very large molecular structure, like chain-like in nature and the backbone of these is like the carbon atom. Mainly you see the carbon will be in the, in the center, the main chain of the carbon, right? Here also. So some of the, the famous the, the examples are for the, for the polymer, we have the polyethylene, we have the nylon, the polyvinyl chloride, right? Polycarbonate, polystyrene, silicon rubber, all these are the examples of the polymer material and they come under the polymer family. So the density is very low. You might have seen the plastic, any plastic material. It is very light, you know, you, 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 you might have seen this helmet, right? Or any other plastic material, it is very light. Why? Because it has low density. 
they are not stiff as strong as the the other material types like the ceramics and metal so they they are not that much stiff you can mold it easily to any shape many of the polymers are extremely ductile right the, and they have the plastic behavior so as i told you they are not stiff you can mold it very easily the plastic material they they have this ductility too much ductility is there so easily you can shape to any complex form if you want to make any complex shape from the polymer so you can easily make it right and about the chemical properties they are inert chemically majority of them right like majority of the polymers are inert chemically they don't react with anything so you might have seen the usually if we have any chemical we put usually in the plastic container why it is so because they don't react with the uh, plastic the chemical don't react with the plastic in your school or uh, high school you might have seen the chemistry lab too much plastic bottles are there right so why we keep it there because they don't react even in your car batteries they is made up of plastic because they have they have the acid so it does not react with the plastic we will not make any battery of the the metal and low electrical conductivity is there and they are non uh, magnetic also so low electrical conductivity non magnetic chemically inert highly ductile low density and less stiffness these are the main characteristics of the polymer material clear guys okay very good now the fourth one is the composites as i told you this is not like but keep one thing in mind here today what we were like in this course we are discussing the the synthetic composite the human made right not the naturally we are not discussing the natural uh, composite so the composite material they are composed of up to or more than two other material and other material can be metal ceramics and polymer right from these uh, three categories it will be there so the, why we why there is a need of the composite material what do you think guys why we, the, the the human feel that we need to have a composite material we we face the problems that sometime if you are talking let's say about the the ceramics the ceramic materials are hard but they are brittle right but if you see the polymer the the polymer material are they are not brittle they are ductile but they are not even hard right so if we need something in between which must be hard as well as ductile so this this is something in between which is not you can say it is not in the these three categories so sometime we need a material which has a properties according to our desire according to our uh, application right and which is not available in these three metal is hard and ductile yes now the the the, the metal ductility and the polymer ductility there is a big difference right so it depends you cannot say like if something is ductile so you can easily do it now there is the ductility uh, uh, value right so polymers are most ductile material metals are ductile but less ductile now hard if you say hard metal is hard also but if you see the the, the ceramics they are hard too hard so it depends now the composite material we want to make it composite material we make a composite material for our desired application so what we do we combine two or more than two material and to have a third material which is known as composite a large number of composite types are represented by different combination of metal ceramics and polymer the, the, the naturally occurring composites are also there if you see wood so wood is neither metal nor it is ceramic nor it is polymer you see it does and it is solid so and we say that solid materials have been divided into three categories so then wood is which category right or bone bone is among which category so they, these these are the naturally occurring composite right but we are not discussing the natural occurring composite we are our discussion is based only on the human made the man made composite material right so the most common are familiar composite you might have uh, even used it and you might have heard this the fiberglass now fiberglass is a composite material it has small glass fiber and it is embedded with the polymeric uh, material normally the epoxy or the polyester so the, the the glass fiber if you mix it with the the epoxy it will give you the fiber glass now the fiber glass material is relatively strong and stiff but also brittle right it is like strong and stiff like metal but it is brittle not ductile like uh, metal 
whereas polymer is more flexible thus fiberglass is relatively stiff and strong and a little bit flexible also now the fiberglass has low density this is not the density is that like for the all composites it depends you can have a composite material which has let's say high density but this one has low density so another new composite material which is used mostly in different applications nowadays is a carbon fiber reinforced polymer the, the cfrp the cfrp material which is a composite material it is used mostly nowadays right in different applications these materials are stiffer and stronger than glass fiber and they like reinf uh, reinforced material reinforced mean to give more strength to a material sometimes we do this reinforcement how we do the reinforcement look in the previous in the old days the the people were making houses of the clay and mud and all these right what they do you might have seen in maybe you have not seen but if you have seen in some movies or somewhere what they do they put the straw you know straw small small pieces they they, they even the the powder the animal eat it you know and it is usually when you have the the wheat crops when you cut the wheat crops you make small uh, small pieces like this much pieces right from the wheat crops not from the grain from the stem of the wheat so that thing is known as straw somehow now those straw we put it in the clay why we put it in the clay because it reinforced the 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 clay right and then if you make something from that clay it will be more stronger as compared to if you make something from the normal clay so this reinforcement is done in the composite material it is very common it has been done even in the uh, what we do when we are building the structure you can use only the concrete but we put the the, the steel rod right sometimes we put the crushed grain and all these things right why we put to reinforce the thing so to improve its property and most of the equipment like your bicycle golf club uh, uh, the 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 material used there the tennis racket the snowboards ski boards and some automobile bumpers they are mostly made up of the cfrp material right as i told you and even the new boeing 787 fuse large the, the whole body of the new boeing the airplane is made up of the cfrp material which is a composite material so we use it in our daily life but usually we don't know wh uh, what it is made up of and you can see the the, the new uh, wood this the, the plywood which is not the natural wood this is also a composite material and it is famous everywhere now all the furniture you see is made up of this artificial wood right which is the composite material very few you can find with the natural uh, wood so all these are what these are like uh, this is the fourth category of the material which uh, we add with the metal the polymer the ceramics and then we have the composite here is the summary of different uh, properties like the density like the um, the strength of the material right the stiffness of the material so different properties at room temperature has been uh, been summarized here you see for the metal if you see the density so metals have the highest density right then the ceramics then the polymer and then the composite somehow here but it is written here which this chart has been made based on the these material only right you see here here in the metal we have the tungsten iron titanium aluminum magnesium all these it is made based on these things now here if you see the composite the, the stiffness if you see the composite is more as compared to the polymer somehow equal to the ceramics and metal right here also we have the strength the tensile strength so the composite is here somehow equal to the the metal and ceramics you see the polymer has very less uh, st strength so the properties these are mainly the four properties have been summarized here you can see which material has highest density or strength and which has the lowest